Hi, I'm Skipper Darrow. So, you say you want to be a liveaboard cruising boater. That's great. And everyone's telling you all the cool things about it, including me. Great again. But it may not be what you think. Here's the liveaboard boating reality check. Five truths about liveaboard cruising. Let's count them down now on The Onboard Life. Number five, it's wet. Whether it's rain from the heavens, spray and wash from the water's surface, or a blast from a hose while you're cleaning the boat, you are going to get wet. Don't have any illusions about it. You're surrounded by water all the time, so you're bound to get some on you. I remember when we told our sons about us leaving to live on our boat. My oldest son asked me, what happens if you're out on the boat and it rains? I thought about it for a second and said, well, we get wet. We have and you will too. Number four, it's windy. This is particularly aimed at you ladies. Do you like your hair to be picture perfect, brushed, curled, and otherwise coiffed to a T? Well, as a liveaboard cruiser, good luck with that. It's windy most of the time, and having your hair just right will be, at best, a challenge. Having a scrunchie and hat handy are prerequisites, but don't let it get you down. I'll let you in on a secret. Us guys think you being windswept is kind of sexy. Number three, it's tiring. The conditions are sometimes tough. It's hot, it's noisy, you're out in the sun. Sleeping arrangements are not always ideal. You're hopping around on deck all the time. You're on constant alert when you're making way. And perhaps the most tiring aspect is keeping your balance, standing or sitting, on a deck when it's pitching and rolling. It's a lot of work too. It can be exhausting to be on a boat, but at least you'll sleep well. Number two, it can be boring. There's a cliche that says it all. Boating is hours of crushing boredom punctuated by moments of sheer terror. That's not too far from the truth. Imagine you're on autopilot on a 170 mile straight reach offshore. The coastline is too far off to make out any landmarks, and watching the chop drift by is hypnotizing you to sleep. It's boring, folks, and it can be tough to stay alert when it's like that. And when it's like that, it can be dangerous. You need tricks to keep yourself focused. And last, number one, it's a test of you and your partner's compatibility. I think if you polled boaters, most of us have heard of and maybe personally witnessed couples who had no business being on a boat together. We have. There's conflict and confusion, unmet expectations, crossed purposes, and perhaps the most terrible thing of all, coercion on the part of one or other of the couple. It's a sad thing to see. The boating industry paints a picture that it's all dolphins and margaritas. Everyone needs to have a clear idea of what they are about to do together. You'll be in very close quarters for extended periods of time, and not all couples are equipped for that kind of togetherness. If any member of a crew needs their space in order to survive this kind of arrangement, perhaps they need to examine the entire situation. Let me expand on this for just a moment more. Our boat, why not, has 350 or so square feet of cabin space. That's it. But we do well together. We like being with each other so much that even when we're on shore leave, it's like we're still on board. We're still always near each other, even though we have more than 350 square feet of living space to use. You need to be in a place where both of you are singularly committed to each other first, then your boating life. It's like a friend of ours once said when someone asked him what he and his wife did to have space from each other. He replied, why would we want to do that? He gets it. So that's it, the Liveaboard Boating Reality Check. Five truths about liveaboard cruising. Don't forget to hit the buttons, like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe. And comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.